on that similar note, that's exactly what I'm talking about today. I'm actually titling my message, Make That Call. Yeah, and, and, and you know, thanks to uh, Dave, David, you know, we were kind of like inspired by uh, Liam Neeson. I don't know if you all noticed him there or not. I don't know who you are, but I will find you. And I'm going to bring you to church. Okay. No, no, you know, sometimes we laugh about all these kind of things, but did, I, did you know there are a lot of studies that have been done by a lot of churches? There was one by this group called Lifeway Research and another by Barna Research. This research says that 82% of people who, who have never been to church, unchurched or pre-believers, say that they would at least be somewhat likely to attend if someone invited them. 82% of people who have never been to church would likely attend if someone actually invited them. And 25% actually say that they would actually take the time to turn up. Inviting is one, but some of them, 25% would actually take the time to turn up if someone would just take the time to bring them or invite them. But the funny thing is that, what you know, if you think about it, if you got, if it's 25%, that's one in four of your friends who will be willing to come to church if you, not some stranger, not some picture, not some invite paper or pamphlet, you took the trouble to invite them to come with you to church. That's why I'm calling a message today, make that call. That's what we're supposed to be doing, all of us. Also, one of our biggest things, church is not only just to, you know, feed our spirits every week. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just not only that. But church is also a place where you can bring your friends out there to come here to experience the same kind of love, grace that you have received while you were in church. Don't you agree? All of us are here because at one time or another, we were all, you know, guilty of something, of sin. We have fallen short. But through church, when we accepted Jesus as our, our Lord and our Savior, we found all of that taken away, washed. We stepped out of it, made new, whole again. We stepped forward knowing that our future is secured by His promises. We, just, we sing it every week. We just sang it as well. A breakthrough is coming. I know it's going to be a miracle, correct or not? We know that promise when we step in because we know what it's like to be under His covering. But don't you think our friends out there who don't know Jesus, don't you think they too deserve to know the same thing? And they're not, they're never going to know. Church, they're never going to know unless you make that call. It's true. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a hard message. If you're going to be offended, don't blame me. Blame him because it's his word I'm putting on to you. But it's true. A lot of friends, I mean, you all, you all, all of you all, you all, as long as you all believe in Jesus, okay, you all, you're secured. You've got nothing to worry. But what about the people out there who don't know Jesus? Don't you think they too deserve an opportunity to get to know the, him the same way you do? And how are they going to do it? Are they going to what, wait for Jesus to come down and personally lead them by the hand? No, that's why He sends you, and you, and you. That's why He provides us with all the tools like what we have in social media. These are all tools provided to help us spread the gospel and the word out to the people out there. Make that call. Make that call, church. That's what we're called to do. Not just come, sit down, get recharged, Get refill. Refreshments are fantastic every week. Oh, we don't say that too loud. Clang got upset at me one time, you know, last week. Because I say KL food better than Clang. They all got really hurt with me. All didn't want to offer me food all after that. So I, this, this kind of was cut from the recording, okay? They lose it against me. But Clang's food, KL's food is quite good. Okay, so, and, but invitation, a simple invitation can be so powerful. I remember um, sometime back, we were in Club Med uh, for a holiday, and we met this this family there as well. Well, actually, we met the family through Bella because, you know, they have this kids program there. 
And she made friends with this little girl that's slightly younger than her. And they became very, very close friends. You know, and then of course we got to meet the parents as well, the family and all that, you know, and became friends and all that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, holidays end, right? You got to go back to reality. You know, and when you go back, of course, they were very sad and all that kind of stuff. She was thinking, I'm never going to see my friend again, so sad, you know. But out of the blue, one of the days, one of the days, then the, the, the girl's parents contacted us through Facebook, right? Got to know us, contacted, connected with us through Facebook, and invited Bella to her daughter's birthday party. Oh my, she was overjoyed. Couldn't sleep for days. Every day I ask you, is today the party? Is tomorrow the party? Is tomorrow the party? What are you going to buy? What are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? Every day I had like headache listening to what's going to go on until finally the party came out. Yo, thank God it's over with. But that simple invitation brought her excitement levels. She was so excited for days knowing that, you know, this is an opportunity for her to come back and get connected again with a friend that she made, be together, you know, spend time together and play and all that kind of stuff. That's the power of a simple invitation. Jesus, now he knew the power of an invitation. He was a power, you know, a powerful person when it comes to invitation. One day when Jesus was out walking near the Jordan River and John the Baptist saw him coming in the distance. So John stood up, nudged two people, pointed at Jesus saying, look, the Lamb of God. Now you can find this in John chapter 1 verse 35. And then two disciples got up, started chasing after Jesus. This was actually Simon and Peter. They got up, started chasing after Jesus. And when they finally caught up to him, they asked Jesus, where, where are you going? Simple, powerful, impactful answer Jesus gave in John chapter 1 verse 39. Come along and see for yourself. That's an invitation. Come along and see for yourself what I can do for you. And they came, they saw where he was living, ended up staying with him the whole day. And it was late afternoon and this happened. Simple invitation. Come and see for yourself. In another words, in Matthew 4, 18 to 22, Jesus simply, come, follow me. No preaching, no pamphlets, no advertisements, nothing. Come, follow me. Just a simple invite. In fact, if you go through most of the Gospels, right? Jesus doesn't go around telling, you know, oh, you must go do this, you must come, you must follow me, you, nothing. He doesn't coerce you, he doesn't force you, he doesn't preach to you in that way to come into him. He never, he's never done that. He invites you. He always calls, come. And that simple thing is enough to compel people to want to follow him. And the moment they take that step to follow him, everything changes forever. Correct or not? That's the power of a simple invitation. Now, if Jesus can do it, look, Jesus didn't go, you didn't have to go and try to, you know, convert the person by going to preach to him and, you know, come in with all kinds of Bible verses, have a whole track, look at all these booklets, these are all the Bible verses, why you must accept my faith. Even Jesus didn't do that. He just said, come. Come along and see. Come, follow me to church. Check out our worship. Come along and see how interesting, how cool worship, our church is. Come. Hey, would you like to follow me? Follow me, la. What are you doing on a Sunday morning? Nothing. Follow me, la. Simple invitation. That's all it takes, church. We complicate things. That's the problem. We think of a thousand and one scenarios why your friend that you could have just simply invited won't come before you actually make the invitation. I know I'm guilty of that. Like nobody's a... You'll think of every scenario you want to cover, every single scenario possible to make sure that your invitation level, 100% confirm yes. It doesn't have to work that way. It doesn't have to work that way. Right? Even the statistics when they shared, you know, when they were shared earlier, when they did the whole thing, 25% of your friends that you invite will probably say yes. That's one out of four. So one probably will say yes. Right? But the other three, you've got to keep trying and trying and trying. You probably have to ask them another four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times until they get fed up of you asking. They'll say, okay, I'll come lah. Still works. <laughs> Still works. Correct or not? And that's how it is. Invitation. Okay? So, next week, of course, like I said earlier, Alpha starts. And I really hope that everybody here signs up. Because it is meant to help you to learn how to share your faith. Okay? With the people that you interact with on a daily basis. It does. 
And most importantly, you need to be able to do it not alone, but with someone out there who doesn't know Jesus yet or what our faith is all about. You need to come with them, do it together, and then you'll find big things will happen, not only for you, but the friend that you brought along too. Now, again, like I said, you don't have to be a preacher. Look, look the, the Bible, we've got one of the disciples, Andrew. Unlike our very own Andrew, who's an excellent speaker, all right? Seriously, the man can preach. Waiting for him to come up here very soon, okay? The man can preach, all right? Now, Andrew, the disciple, wasn't well known as an, a speaker as well, or a preacher. His brother Peter was. In the book of Acts, Peter went out and did all kinds of things, but you don't hear much about Andrew. Andrew did a lot of other stuff, though, but preaching wasn't one of those things, all right? But... I think, and for me, Andrew's biggest, biggest call to fame was actually found in John chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. Andrew was at two disciples, right? The first thing when he heard about Jesus from John the Baptist, you know what he did, not the first thing? He went to his brother Simon and called him. Called him, find him. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother, tell him, we have found the Messiah and he brought him to Jesus. He invited his brother to come and see Jesus. And that became a life-turning moment, a pivotal moment in Peter's life. And Jesus anointed him and changed his name from Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas or Peter. Now, we don't know today which of your friends out there who's going to have a Peter moment like that as well. You don't know. You might be the Andrew to his Peter, to that Peter. But if you don't go out and invite one, once you hear about Jesus, you don't go out and be obedient like Peter and invite someone to come and know Jesus, that friend of yours is never going to have that Peter moment. What are you waiting for? Make that call. Make that call. Right? Make that call. Now look. Okay, you're saying, oh, yala, you know, very good, very easy for, you know, Pastor Noel to talk like this. He's on stage. And all his pastors, and all they do is talk, 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 you know. And they're supposed to do that, correct. But let me share with you. Me and, and Pastor Sunita, right, I grew up in a non-instrumental, an instrument church. Non-instrument church, that's the correct word. We didn't have a big stage like that, okay. I, I was from a very traditional Catholic background. So, you know, we had a very Catholic upbringing. And it, it never for me, for some reason, never resonated for me. Never resonated in my heart. I attended. I was very, very, uh, I would say, diligent. I went for all my Sunday schools. I attended and did all my uh, sacraments from, from Holy Communion to the last one confirmation. I did everything. Came, went there every Sunday. But it, it was such a, a, an autopilot thing. You, you turn up because you had to turn up. But there was no real experience for me personally. So, before you know it, yes, we were turning up the church, but we were what, we, what they called outstanding Christians. We were literally outstanding Christians. <laughs> Some of you all didn't get it, but if I think about it, you'll get it eventually. All right? So, we were like that. Until, until one day, one day, all right, again, true, the power of invitation. Some of my friends were invited to come and check out a new church. And when they came back, and when we had our time around, we were all younger, every evening after work, we'd all hang out at the, the mama stalls and all that kind of stuff. We'd be, you know, having um, iced lemon tea <coughs> and all that, and te tare. <coughs> so, we know when we were doing all that, and they said, hey, we should go and check out this church, you know. I said, okay, come on. La. We Catholics, we die Catholics. Hardcore, to the grave. They said, just check it out, la. no harm, what? And besides, I heard this place, got, and this place got real, really cute girls, okay? I'll be honest, yes, it was not a great start to my spiritual walk, okay? But one motivating factor was because there were cute girls in this particular church. But church, that was 23 years ago when I first stepped into what was called at that time Christian Life Center in Port Klang. 23 years ago, and today I'm here, standing here talking to all of you all. That church is the power of an invitation. If that person did not get invited to attend church, to check out the church, that person did not then convey the same invitation to me 
I would still be an outstanding Christian somewhere else. Instead of here, sharing the word of God to you. Now, somebody out there, somebody out there, one of your friends, maybe it's a family member, you know, a colleague, or maybe even the neighborhood uh, shopkeeper or cleaner or someone, you know, a neighbor, they need to know Jesus the same way you do. And they, who knows, 20 years down the road, 5 years down the road, 10 years down the road, they could be doing what I'm doing right now or even more. They could be the next Billy Graham. You never know. Incidentally, Billy Graham came to Christ as well. He threw the power of invitation. If the person, I forgot his name. Was it D.L. Moody? Um, no, I forgot his name. He was also invited. And when he accepted the invitation, he came to church for the first time. Changed his life. And became one of the most prolific, powerful, well-known speaker and preacher of the word of God. Entire world, the whole world knew about Billy Graham and the power that he used and the word that he brings. Power of invitation. Someone out there who needs to know the word of God. Someone out there needs to come in here right now and feel his glory and blessing. If you look to your left and if you look to your right, if you see an empty seat, shame on you. I, I, I don't mean this to put you down. I mean this to challenge you. There should not be an empty seat next to you. There should be someone who needs to know the word of God, joining you here today in church, filling up that empty seat, changing their life for the better forever. Because my life, my family, and all my friends' lives, all have changed, for tremendously have changed ever since we accepted that invitation to check out the cute girls in Christian Life Center 23 years ago. Yeah? Instantly, my friend who, who invited me I ended up marrying a cute girl as well. And now he's pastoring a church in, Des in Subang Jaya. Right? So, all that's required for you, you don't have to be a preacher, you don't have to preach the word, you don't need to know, you know, have you know, continuous tracks of Bible knowledge and all that. Kind of you don't need to do all that. You don't need to know all that as well and carry it around with you. Why? It's going to complicate things. All you need to learn how to do is to have a simple invitation. And the simple invitation is, would you like to join me with church on Sunday? What are you doing on Sunday morning? Come lah, I'll buy you lunch. Or you come to church, some of the best food in KL is here, thanks to Yeni. Oh my God, that part is so delete the part. Okay, KL, my God. I said that. Right? Yeah. You want cute girls? I see cute girls and handsome boys all around. No, no look. Sometimes it works for some people. It worked for me 23 years ago. I don't know if it works for now for people. But I was interested to go to church to check out all the cute girls. I was single and happening. Well, I wish I was happening. But I was single. I wanted to check out cute girls. So I went to church. But when I stepped in, I heard the word. I was touched by the spirit. Cute girls was no longer an issue. Even though I married one. But you know, it was no longer the issue. Because my life had been transformed from the inside out for His glory. For his glory. But if I did not get that invitation, church, I'd still be somewhere, I don't know, God knows what. Doing God knows what. So, to invite, how to invite? Okay, la, you know, you know, it sounds simple, I'm like oversimplifying things. Yeah, I can't be that simple, la, you know. You just say, oh, I just can't go to people and say, would you like to come to church? Would you like to come to church? Would you like to come to church? Would you, like to to church? Would you, like to you can't just go around doing that, correct or not? So you got to be specific. You got to have certain, you got to have a strategy on how to do things like this, right? So let me share with you some, first of all, some common reasons why, what people give, why people, or what some common reasons people give not to come to church so that you're prepared, okay? Where I work in a, uh, in a call center, right? When they do telemarketing, telesales, all that kind of stuff, they call this objection handling. They already know these are the, what the possible negative answers, so they'll tell you these are the answers you need to do to counter those answers. So I'm going to give you those tips, okay? The first, number one reason uh, people say why they don't come to church is because that they are too busy. Okay? For some people, Sunday is their only day off. Okay? I, I know, I can relate. It's their only day off. Right? And they don't want to have an, a day where they can come, do stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff and all that, you know? And a lot of times they'll argue back to you, but didn't God say, you know, you must have a day of rest? Sunday is my day of rest. I want to rest at home. I don't want to go anywhere. Okay? Now, yes, you know, 
God wants you to have a God, their day of rest and all that kind of stuff. All right? And God also knows that we ultimately live in a fast-paced, high-tech, high-stress place that we call the world. Phew, I thought I was a cockroach. You know? <laughs> By the end of the work week, most of us are brain dead. Sleep demanded, longing for some rest and relaxation. Now, that's where we come in. And people say they're too busy. We need to remind people that your spiritual batteries need recharging just as much as their physical batteries. A lot of people who are physically active and all that kind of stuff, what they do? They go to the gym, they work out, they run, right? I don't do any of those stuff, okay? <laughs> Which is very obvious, okay? But the truth is, we do what is important to us. We all have the same number of days in a week, correct? Every one of us got seven days. Anyone got eight days in a week? No, we don't. We all have got 24 hours in a day. We all have got seven days in a week. And Jesus says this, so nicely shared by Stanley just now, in Matthew 6.33, Seek first God's kingdom and what God wants, then all your other needs will be met as well. Everything. So going to church is really like going to a gym, you know. Really. A lot of people know it's good for them. A lot of people know going to church is good for them. Right? And that they should do it. They just lack the motivation. You know, I, even I, when I go to the gym, I might go, I'll work out today. Tomorrow I'll be on a treadmill running. And then third day, I'll be at home sleeping down and say, tired, like my back paining. Yesterday, it went a bit too hard to crack something there. And next thing I know, fourth, fifth, sixth, I bought a Fitbit and I still haven't. <laughs> it's just decorating, decoration my watch, uh, hand. I will use one day. It tells me how many steps I got, so which is a good thing, like, you know. But we need to remind people that just like exercising regularly, the benefits of having a healthy, uh, being in a healthy, well-balanced church far outweighs any sacrifices you may have. Yes, a few hours on a Sunday morning, it's, uh, you're sacrificing a little bit of sleep. Yeah, but being here not only recharges your batteries, you're connecting with a big picture, big family, people who will stand with you, people who will support you, people who will stand, you know, and listen to your, uh, uh, maybe you've got problems, maybe you need something, you know, somewhere to, there are people out here who will stand by you, be with you, support you, care for you, love you. That's what being in the church is for. That's what it's a saying, right? No man is an island. True. You cannot be alone out there doing. And a lot of times, a lot of people, they, they want to do that. They want to stay alone, aloof. Don't nobody disturb them. Don't disturb me. I just want to be on my own. Do my own thing. They, they don't realize that that's not the kind of life that you were designed to do. You are meant to do life together. We were meant to do life in a community. And church is one of the best places to do that. Doing life together. Wasn't that one of our, you know, taglines? Yeah, your best life. And you only can experience that here in church. Together with your fellow brothers and sisters. And how blessed Citricale, you guys. You guys, you know, are, 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 like, are, are unique in that sense because you've got brothers and sisters from every single nation on earth. You take a stone and throw, oh, so it's country there. You, you'll find a lot of churches are not blessed in that, in, in that kind of diversity. You guys have it all and more. Imagine now if you were to take that opportunity, that blessing that you have here, the gift that we have here in this church, that diversity, that power of strength that it, in the different, different people that all of you all are, and go out and bring in more people. More people. More people. The Dead Sea is dead because the River Jordan continue, continuously flows into it but doesn't flow out again. But you guys are coming in here, being planted, growing, you know, and building off all kinds of things. And then a lot of you being students end up going back home. And you take back a part, a piece, the culture, whatever you have learned, the glory and grace that you've had here, back to where you're from. Correct or not? Automatically then, what are you doing? You're growing. You're spreading the word of God. You're not going to leave the church, go somewhere else and then become aloof. You're going to find yourself a church. Get yourself planted. Moving on there. Go out. Go out and invite more people. Bring that people into church as well. And you're going to continue the work of God wherever you go. But it starts here. Amazing, isn't it? So you've got this gift of this church. Don't let the excuse of being busy, too busy, stop you from inviting that friend to come in. 
Okay? The second reason people always give is that church is boring. Oh my God, church is so boring. You all have heard that before, right? How many of you all have heard church is boring? Well, yes, unfortunately, some people have that kind of experience. Right? They don't have, you know, they think, you know, it's all about coming, you sit down, you listen, 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 listen. You stand when you're told, you sit when you're told, you kneel when you're told, you sing this, you sing that, and then you go back. To them, that's what they think, the perception. But come on, you all just saw some power, pulsating, riveting, people are jumping. I saw Emmanuel jumping, I thought he was going to fall down and break something here just now with his, you know, bass guitar. But he was dancing with no, with, with no abandon. That's church. We are alive. We are energetic. Correct or not? That's how church is supposed to be. And guess what? Even Jesus was not boring. He was not boring at all. Really? Are you sure about that? I can tell you this, okay? I can get it because the Bible tells me so. You look at Matthew 7 verse 28. The crowds were amazed, amazed at his teaching. Okay? In Matthew 22, verse 33, the crowds were profoundly impressed. Now, those are big words, yeah? Profoundly impressed. In Mark 11, verse 18, the people were spellbound by his teaching that even the chief priests and scribes could not do anything. And in Mark 12, verse 37, the great crowd enjoyed listening to him. Jesus was able to captivate and hold the attention of crowds as big as 15,000 for hours. Now, he didn't go there, stand there. I can bet you he was not like this. Okay, maybe the Bible doesn't, you know. But I would like to think, if I got a crowd of 15,000 people, he's not going to stand there, blessed be the meek, blessed be the son, he's not going to da 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 blah, blah, blah. He's not going to talk like, he would have been, you know, you know, blessed be the son again. He would have been, you know, energetic. He would have been charismatic. How else to be? How else would people be spellbound by him? How else would people be, you know, amazed by his teaching? That's how church is supposed to be. Aren't you glad that you are part of a church that's also like that? I mean, our Pastor Joe and Pastor Stella, wow. Pastor Joe, when he's on the roll, wow, 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 correct or not? Yeah? Now, I, thank God, I don't, cannot claim to be as, you know, as dynamic or spellbinding as Jesus or even our Pastor Joe, okay? But if I can capture your attention for 25, 30 minutes, who praise Lord. Alright? I'm happy with that as well. Okay? When our worship or preaching is dull, people just don't think that the pastor or the worship team or the church is boring, you know. They think Jesus is boring. But he's not. Jesus is not boring. Okay? Scripture tells you. Okay? He, when you come the church every week on a Sunday. It should be a, a joyous thing. Happy. You'll be filled with joy, emotions, excited. Alright? And if you want your friends to come, they need to see that same kind of excitement, enthusiasm that you have after church on Monday. Imagine you're going back to church today, all, oh, yeah, oh, I'm all fired up. Church is fantastic. And then you're going to church Monday. If you turn up to work on a Monday lah, or school on a Monday, oh, your church, uh, where's my damn coffee lah? One coffee lah. Can't function, your face all sour, look like you suck on the most sourest thing. I mean, come on. If church was joyous, you enjoyed church, Monday to Friday, you will be carrying the same spirit with you. Infectious, joyous, excited, happy, full of enthusiasm. And your friends well, we cannot help but ask you, why are you like this? Come to church and find out. Simple invitation. But you got to make that call. And how you carry yourself plays a major, major role. You carry yourself like as if church was a burden. Oh my God, I had to listen to Pastor Noel talk today. It was like, what the hell? Make that call, make that call. I call like, how many times? How many times do you want me to call? Then you go on Monday, your friends see your face all sucky like that. And then they say, can you come to church with me here? With your face like that? I don't think so. <laughs> True or not? Am I speaking to real people here? Or are you all, you know, special in that sense or what? I don't know. It's true or not? How, you are, how do you carry yourself plays an important part whether your friend is going to say yes or no? If you look like you, 
hate church. If you look like church is such a boring, dull place, they're going to see it in your face and how you carry yourself on Monday. And when you actually invite them, they're going to say, Tiflo, on Mondays after church look like... And then he wants me to come to the same place. Uh. Well, not going to happen. Guaranteed. So carry yourself in a way that will show your friends how exciting and how joyous and how wonderful church really is. Yeah? The third most common reason why people don't attend church anymore is that they feel it's an unfriendly place. Yeah, church can be an unfriendly place filled with people who are cliquish. You know, they only mix with their own kind, own type, own gender, own species. You know? <laughs> you know? That's all they want to do. They only mix with their own people. And then they are very judgmental. Oh my God, so short is good. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Look at the holes in his pants. You see what? Ventilation, not enough air conditioning, is it? Ugh. What kind? Does this look like a place for blue color hair? Or, you know, this kind of or white color hair? Or, you know, get a hair dye, girl. No, unfortunately, a lot of people are exposed to that kind of attitudes. And sadly to say, a lot of churches have that kind of people. Thank God you guys are far from that. Seriously, if anything at all, if anything at all, you guys, all of y'all, from the stewards, okay, to each and every one of y'all, you guys should be poster boys for church friendliness. Really, you you all should. Because the moment you step in here, the moment you step in, you feel the friendliness. You feel the warmth. Everybody's shaking your hand, greeting. They go all out of the way. You know why you're not? Because each and every one of you all expects, looks for the people who are first time here. They look for the friends. They don't stick to their own people, own type, own kind, own species. They look for anybody and everybody and they want to connect with them. That's your culture. Our culture. And that's the kind of culture, that warm, that friendless, people need to no. They will debunk the myth that church is unfriendly. The moment you look at all your smiley, happy faces, especially when you come in, the, when I walk in the door, it's just like an amazing feeling. Seriously, when I walk in the door, it's always an amazing feeling. Every time I come in here, it's like, wow. And I don't come in that often, correct or not? So every time when I come in here, it's like, wow. You guys are always smiling, cheerful. Everybody's reaching out, shaking out. Sometimes I get in like it. You know, tunnel couple, risk couple syndrome of shaking all their hands, you know. And But that's how you are. And people out there need to know that you guys are super friendly, super loving, kind, warm. The people out there need to know that. The only way they're going to know that church is if you make that call. Only if they make the, you make that call. The Bible says in 1 John 4 verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Uh, if you love God and if you love your church, you will make a concerted effort this week to invite someone, your friends, relatives, associates, colleagues, neighbors to church with you. And don't do, do this one week. It should be an ongoing thing week after week, finding an opportunity to invite someone, anyone, to church. That's our call. That's what we're called to do, each and every one of us. Not all of us can be preachers. Not all of us can be uh, musicians or singers. But all of us can invite someone to come here to experience the joy, presence, and glory and grace of God. All of us can. Right? So, let me give you some advice uh, when inviting. Because when, we, when, when you all actually go out, you know, this week to invite someone, let me give you a few tips you should take with you all, okay? Okay? Very important tips. Pay attention. The first one is be specific. Be very specific. Don't just say, hey, come to church with me lah. Oh. What? When? How? Who? Where? Of course, you're going to ask all right? So, be specific. Hey, you know, 
this week I'm having an Alpha class. We got Alpha class going on. Alpha is one of the fantastic programs that we got going on. We started in you know, 77, and we found a lot of people have found it very beneficial. It's totally free, food provided, and it's not a you know downright boring lecture. It's actually very interactive and fun. Would you like to join me this Sunday or not? Be specific. I mean, what I just said was a bit long, but you can you know simplify it as well. Something that will suit your style. My point is be specific. Our church, every year we organize, we organize back to back. In fact, from January all the way to June, we have got so many events lined up just to win people to church. The first one, of course, Alpha. Then we've got uh, Chinese New Year Connect Group parties coming up then. Alive 24-7 is going to be having a date night for all those young happening singles. I'm out of it, unfortunately. But all the other young happy singles, you've got Alive 24-7 date night. Okay, then we've got Good Friday, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day. All fantastic events, all designed to get your friends out there into church here. So that they can know the power, the glory and grace and love of God that they have over their lives. But it's all useless if you don't make that call. I can talk. I can't be calling your friends. You know your friends. You have to step up and make that call. And be specific. Tell them straight up. If they say no, I, oh, I, this week I can't. No, that's okay. Hey, you know what? If you can't come this Sunday, our next Alpha class on the 10th of February, and we've got a very important topic, you know, it's, it's about why did Jesus die? Would you like to join me on that day? Why don't you mark your calendar, book your date? Can I book your date? You know? Let me one date that you would sing. That's why we listed it all out here for you, so that you can plan in advance. Tell them, hold them, invite them, be specific, so that they'll book your time, and then you follow up with them. Don't laugh. Today, today you invite them, you, then you, you just ignore them for the next three weeks, and then on the 9th of February, you call them, hey, you remember not, three weeks ago. <laughs> no, of course, you have to keep getting connected with them. Stay in touch with them, so that at the end, when it comes the, on the 10th, they will definitely be inclined to follow you. All right? The second reason you got to also um, be, okay, when you want to invite someone is be considerate. Now, nobody likes showing up somewhere new, feeling out of place, not doing what they're supposed to do. Do I open this door? Do I walk in here? Do I wear the toilets? Or do I sit here? Or is this reserved for some special person? You know, no, nobody, you know, I mean, when you go to a new place, you definitely have all these questions and then you feel a bit awkward, right? You don't know what to do and all that kind of stuff. So, when you invite someone, at least offer to pick them up. Bring them to church with you. You know, they'll feel more comfortable knowing that, you know, I don't have to navigate where do I go, do I go here, if I sit here, someone, oh, there's a sign that says reserve museum, but I can't sit here. That means, I don't know, my first time here. But if you go and pick them up and you bring them to church, then they'll be relieved. They'll be happy. Then they'll be, they don't have that awkwardness and more, and then they'll be free and open to receive the word of God or even better, receive your friendliness and your warmth and your kindness sitting together with the rest of you. And he'll probably end up leaving that day without awkward feelings or thoughts, but made a list, a whole, whole list of new friends that's going to continue keeping up with him through connect groups and more church services. So we need to be considerate. Okay? And then, of course, don't come there. You go, pick them up, bring them to church, come down to church, okay? You're on your own, bro. No, you got to take them around, shake hands, introduce them to people, get them to know people, connect with them, you know, others and all that kind of stuff. This is my connect group leader, this is my pastor, this is my friend, this is another person, this person is here, you know. And then they'll become comfortable knowing everybody knows them and knows their name. Be considerate, all right? The third thing you need to do is, and this is one of my <coughs> favorites, is that you must be persistent. Just because this person said no one time, gave up lah, give up. Lost cause. No, you don't give up that way. You keep asking. But you don't keep asking, can you come church with me? 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 No, that's not being persistent. That's just being stockish. Okay, and creepy. Okay? If a person could probably first time tells you, you know, hey, would you like to come church with me? No, I no, 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 you know, I'm got things going on Sunday morning. I understand, you know, no problem at all and all that. But don't let it end like that. You can always then connect with him in other ways. After that, just because he said no, you can always connect with him, say, take him out for tea, coffee, 
find out a little bit more about him. What does TJ like? Does TJ have a girlfriend? Yes, I heard he has. But you don't know that until you take him out for coffee, right? Right? And then you make friends with him. And then he gets more closer to you, more connected with you. And then you pop the question again. No, not, will you marry me? But <laughs> you pop the question by asking, will you come to church with me again? Now that he has you know, developed a closer bond with you, more you know, intimate, closer with you, friendlier with you and all kind of stuff, higher chance he might say yes, right? Even if he say no, keep trying again. Sometimes some people need that you know, reassurance of friendship, closeness, that bond. You know, they look up to someone, they respect the person, they look up to the person and they see, you know, wow, I see your life. They, they, after mixing with you, your life is like this, you look like that. I also want a little bit of what you have. That will spur in their hearts to want to say yes to your invitation. Not just, you know, out of the blue, just randomly, come just to me, I can. Uh. No, uh, okay, uh, you, you die, uh, you. No, it doesn't work that way. You got to build connections, friendships, relationships. And then when you finally pop the question to them, they're going to say yes. And they will follow you and join you here. Remember, 25% of your friends may, might say yes. So the others will probably take a bit more effort. And you have to take that effort. If you don't take the effort, then we can't, you can't just like leave them on the wayside. Correct, you know, we just can't give up people like that. We have to keep trying. Okay? In fact, Jesus said, and it was one of my favorite parables, and I always thought of it as a, you know, a, in a giving sense. But actually, to me, it makes a lot of sense this way. So Jesus said this in um, Matthew 13, verse 3 to 8. He, he told many stories. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. Birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow so soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have dead, uh, deep roots, they died. Next verse. Next slide. Tatinda, next slide. Ah, okay. No, back. Ah, okay. Uh, number verse 7. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as been planted. So I really thought about it and, you know, it's fantastic because actually Jesus was talking about four different types of soil. Four different types of soil. And that four different types of soil can be your four different kinds of Friends, there's now some survey that they did, you know, for like 25%, correct or not? So, uh, there probably be some, you know, your, the seeds is your invitation. And you're scattering it. The farmer goes and he scatters, he goes out, makes friends, and he scatters the seeds. Right? Some of it will fall on rocky ground. Some of it will fall on the uh, shallow soil. But some will fall on fertile soil. That's one out of four. But it is useless if you don't go out and make that call and scatter those seeds. If you don't go out there and scatter those seeds, then it's not going to fall on anything. Your seed is not going to produce anything. It's going to sit in your pocket or sit in your heart or wherever and not do anything. But when you scatter them out, it's great. Some of it, you don't know who. But out of four people, it's one pull is going to get it. Lah. And look at the crop that they'll produce. 30, 60, or even 100 times as much has been planted. And that's your promise. That's, that's God's promise. You don't know who is going to be, but you don't know which of your friend tomorrow that you're going to invite who is going to be like that. But if you don't invite them to church, Tomorrow, you'll never know. Or just imagine, huh? and that same survey says that what no? Only 2% of church members actually take the trouble to invite an unchurched person to church. If all of us then, I think we need to break that statistic. Imagine if all of us actively goes out, make friends, invite them to church. We would break that statistic. 
If 2% out of all of y'all here can bring 1%, if all of us do that, don't you think then our church will double like that? Filled to the brim with people hungry for the word of God. You don't know the person that you can invite tomorrow is going to be the next pastor, preacher, teacher, or the next Billy Graham for all that matters. You don't know that until you go out and make that call. So, as our keyboardist and the band um, comes up on stage, I would like to basically wrap up and conclude that church, we all have got a responsibility. Like I said, I've shared this before. And I've not meant, and not meaning this, you know, to put it down or scold you, but I want to challenge each and every one of you all today. Inviting someone to church is the easiest thing you can do, but it's something that sadly not practiced by a lot of people, by a lot of us. That needs to change. That needs to change. Jesus wants you to go out there and spread his word. Not necessarily you have to go out there and preach the word, but the simplest thing is, even he did it. Even Jesus did it through the power of a simple invitation. Would you now, church, together with me, stand up and accept this challenge? Come on, let's all stand up. Stand up and accept this challenge right now. That as after you leave this door, it's not about recharging your batteries. But you're going to change your outlook. You're going to change your thinking. You're going to change your you know, your, your, your thought pattern and you can be thinking how, who, when and looking for the next person to join you in church tomorrow. Because we need to be like that. We need to be a living church. We need to be a dynamic church. We need to be a growing church. Not for our benefit. God doesn't, you know, He doesn't work that way. But we need to do it for His benefit. We need to do it for the kingdom of God out there. And for the benefit of the people out there who don't know His love, His glory, His grace. There's so many people out there who are suffering, who are you know, in, going through all kinds of troubles, challenges, persecution, mental issues, issues of the heart. Because they don't know what it's like to have Christ in their life. They don't know what it's like to live their life by faith. Walking that path. So church, as every heart, every hand slips it up right now. I want to encourage you all right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that right now, Lord, your word is being scattered, Lord. And none of it is falling on, on bad soil, Lord. But every single seed is falling, is falling on fertile ground, Lord. That is the hearts of your people right here, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that we're going to take your word back, Lord. We're going to walk by faith, Lord. We're going to walk according to your word. We're going to follow your ways, Lord. And we're going to go out to our friends, our families, our colleagues, anyone who needs to know your glory, your grace, to hear your word, Lord. And we're going to invite them, Lord. We're going to go out there eh, boldly, Lord, and call, come, Come along and join me and see how Jesus can change your life. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, let the anointing be upon the people right now, Lord. Touch their hearts. Touch every single one of them right, right now. As they leave, Lord, they're not going to leave empty, Lord. But they're going to be they're going to leave, Lord, burning, Lord. Burning brightly, Lord, with your presence, Lord. And your anointing, Lord, having their hearts, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name be us and pray. Amen.